In this video, I'm finishing off the chess piece tutorials with the king. It's a nice easy one, but do make sure you've looked at the pawn at chess piece at first. And if you've watched that, you'll find the first stage of this one fairly straightforward. And if you like the style of learning with challenges and a methodical approach, and are looking to learn Blender fast, then don't miss out on my beginner course bundle. Get three amazing courses, still at the incredibly low price of $25 for the duration of this series. Discount link in the description. So let's get started with the challenges. So your first challenge is to get up to this stage here. So the body of the chess piece, but not the cross at the top. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I've got my reference image, but before I drag it in, it's a good idea to go into Blender and go to front view first, and then drag your chess piece in, then it'll be aligned to that view, as you can see there. Then back to front view, I can start putting it into the correct position, and I've left the X and Z axis, so it's easy to put into the middle. So G then Z to move it up, hold down shift for smaller increments to about there, and it looks like the Z axis is pretty much in line. Once you've got your reference in, we need to create a single vertex to trace around our chess piece and use the screw modifier to build it. To create a single vertex, we can take any of the basic primitives. We've got the default cube, so I'll select that and use it. I'll press tab to go into edit mode or edit mode up here. With all the vertices selected, and you can press A to select all. I can press M to merge at center, and that will give me a single vertex in the middle there. Now in order to trace round, we must make sure we're in vertex mode. So that's vertex mode up here, or you can press one on your keyboard to get to that quickly. I'll zoom in a bit and E to extrude to pull out a single vertex and X to constrain that one to the X axis. And then I can keep pressing E to extrude and just extrude out to each of the extremities. So I'll go all the way around. I might do two for this curve for the neck here and then just continue up the shape. When we get to the end here, we come back to the middle and roughly align it. And then I can press N on my keyboard, go to item and type in zero to make sure it's in the middle. So I've traced around the outline. Now I can go to my modifiers, add modifier and screw. And you can see that creates that shape there. In the modifier settings, the default steps, so that's how many subdivisions all the way around the king is set to 16. And that's actually a really good number for what we're about to do. So I'll leave it on that. I'll click Merge. That will make sure the top and the bottom vertices are merged. And then under the normals, make sure that you've got Calculate Order. If I expand this out, Calculate Order, make sure that's ticked. And now we're ready to smarten it up. So you can see it's a bit pointy at the moment. We need to bevel these vertices to make it more smooth. So I'll go to Front View, zoom in a bit, and select a vertex and press Control Shift B to bevel it. And you can see when I move my mouse to the side, there's two vertices there, and I can left click to set those. Now what we can do for all these inside ones, not these two here yet, but all these inside ones, I can select them all and press Control Shift B and just move my mouse out slightly. And you can see it's beveled them all at the same time. You just have to be a little bit careful not to go too far for some of these smaller areas. And you might have to go in and maybe scale those down a little bit. For all the extremities, I'll do three. So Control Shift B, move my mouse to the side and use my wheel to create three points. And then I can go back in, select them, scale them up, move them into position if I need to. Now, as you can see, it's selected two there, but there is actually an extra one just there. And I'd gone a little bit too far with that one. So I'll just tidy those up a little bit. You have to watch out if they touch each other or overlap. So just watch out for that. If you're doing it the quick way, like I did here. One at the top there as well, I forgot to do. And there we've got our chess piece, just these ones in the middle here now, Control Shift B, and I'll bring my wheel back down for two subdivisions like this, make them fairly even, and that looks about right. So we've got a nice base to our chess piece there. So hopefully you've gotten okay with that. Let's name our object King. And at this point, I would recommend making a duplicate of the King. So into object mode, Shift D to duplicate and left click. And there's King 001 and I'll hide the original king there. Because we're going to apply the modifier, which is a form of destructive modeling as it's known. So it's nice to be able to come back to this point. I'd also save your work as well. So quickly take a moment, pause the video, create that duplicate and save your work. Okay, so we're going to make the top next, but I'd like you once again to have a go at doing that yourself and see how you get on. You might surprise yourself and find it fairly straightforward. Pause the video and have a go at that. 
Okay, so as I said, we need to apply this modifier. So I can hover over the modifier and press Control A, or I can go to the drop down and apply just there. And if I go into edit mode, you can see those 16 subdivisions all the way around our shape. Now I can use a mirror modifier, so I only have to work on one quarter. And I always like to use the auto mirror for that. It makes the job much quicker. But for that, we need to enable it. So edit, preferences, add-ons, type in auto. There's the auto mirror there, make sure it's ticked and then close this down. Now under my side menu, and remember you can press N to hide or make that visible. Under the edit slot, I've got auto mirror just there. So I want to mirror along the X axis. So X axis selected there. And the positive side is this side over here. So it will keep that side. And I can press auto mirror. And you can see it's done just that. Cut it in half. We've got this side to work on here. And there's my mirror modifier there with clipping enabled. I can also do it in the Y axis as well. So let's choose the Y axis. This time I need to change it to the negative. So the front stays because the positive is actually going away from us. So Y, negative, and then I can press auto mirror again. And you can see I'm left with this quarter here. The only thing about this is that it does create two mirrors. You can actually delete one and just enable the Y and you can see that's deleted it there. And if I enable both the X and the Y on this mirror, you can see that it's come back again. Just looks a bit cleaner like that. Okay, so I've got to try and make the cross at the top. So I'll zoom into that area. I'll go to my faces and select my top faces and press I to inset. Now that's not taking into account the boundary and I can press B for boundary. So it does take into account the boundary and doesn't inset that. And I want to come into about here by the looks of things. Let's just have a quick look at that. That looks about right. Now, once I've done that, I want to create a kind of square shape out of these. That's easy enough. I can go in and select this point here, GG to edge slide and bring that out slightly, bring that out as well and this out as well. Again, double tapping G for edge slide. Let's go to top view and see how well I've done. That's not too bad, but I can line them up a bit better. So I can select these and press scale Y zero and that lines them up that way. And these ones scale X zero and that lines them up that way. So we've got a nice square there. Then I can go to face mode once again with three on my keyboard or face mode just there. Select these top faces and start extruding them out. Go to front view for this and extrude out this way. I have actually forgotten to do this lip here, but we can add that in later with no problems. So up to this point here, extrude again, to there and extrude again to the top and then round to the side, these two faces here, back to the front, E to extrude. And there we've got our basic chest piece and it's looking okay. But of course we need to add some supporting loops in there because when we add our subdivision surface to smooth it out, it will look a bit blobby. Let's try that now. If I go back to object mode and press control two, that's the shortcut for the subdivision surface modifier, which you can see there. I'll undo that and do it the long way just to show you. So in the modifiers, add modifier, subdivision surface modifier, and it does the same thing. So we've got one level in the viewport and two in the render. I'll turn it up to two because it's quite a low poly shape and it shouldn't matter too much. And it will just make it look that bit cleaner. So we've got this very blobby top because we've not got any of those supporting loops. So let's go into edit mode again and see what happens when I start adding them. So control R, left click and bring that out. Control R, left click and bring that in. And with the supporting loops, control R, left click, bring that down here. Control R, left click. You can see it's tightening the shape up nicely. So Control R, left click here. One at the bottom, Control R, bring that down. One here, Control R, bring that in. And we've sharpened it up fairly successfully. However, we've got a sort of blobby area around the edge here. Let's go back to object mode and you can see it's curved there and curved around here. Back into edit mode, what I need to do is use this edge coming down the side here to sharpen up this area. You can of course add an edge in. So if I press control R to do a loop cut and bring that in, that does work, but we need to then bring this out and it can get a bit awkward. Instead, it's just easier to use these ones that are already there. So I'll select from here down to here. And I can do that by holding down control and it will take the shortest path. And then I can press GG to edge slide that across. So it sharpens that up. And then this one from up the top here, down to here. Oh, and it's gone around that way. I'll undo that because there's a longer path this way. So I'll hold down control here. So it takes the shortest path to there and then hold down control here. So it's the shortest path down there. And then GG to edge slide that across and we've sharpened that edge up as well. Then back into object mode, I'll hide my empty on my reference and we've got quite a nice looking chest piece just there.
We have got a little bit of a lump just here. That's because I've forgotten to put the edge loops here and here. And that's looking a lot better. So hopefully you had a go at that yourself. If not, you might want to pause the video here and catch up with me again. The last bit is just this tiny lip that was here in our reference. If I bring us down to here, you can see that just there. And that does seem to work as a chess piece, so I'll add that in. Hide my reference again, and just add that in manually. So into edit mode, Control R to do a loop cut. Now the thing about this is it's squared off a bit. So if I press left click to set the loop cut, it becomes more square as I go that way, and less square as I go this way. So we want it to keep this structure that's out to this side. Now if I press E, that's known as even, and that's mapping to the outside shape there, that's working nicely. If you keep pressing E, that will kind of turn it off. So you need to press E and then F in this case to flip it to the outside like this. And then it was about here, I believe. Let's go to top view and see what that looks like. And you can see it's kept that structure fairly nicely. These do go in a little bit here, so you might want to just tidy it up manually if you want to, but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Now I can go to face mode, select these inside faces, Oh, actually I'll undo that. I need to bevel this one first. So I've got something to pull up. So into edge mode, select this edge and control B to bevel that. And we can use three here as a supporting loop. Then into face mode, select these faces and I need to bring those upwards. I'll select these ones as well around the middle here. If I just turn on the on cage option. You can see what I've got selected there. I'll turn that off because that is a little bit confusing. G then Z to move those upwards and I'm creating that lip there. Need some supporting loops though, so I can press Control R and create one down here. So we've got a little bit of an indent there. And this one up here, I can bevel that again. Probably just needs two about there. We created that external lip and that works nicely. Let's just zoom out and see what that looks like. And I think that's quite successful. So hopefully you've enjoyed this series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.